Hey YouTube, just doing a uh, video on my Smith & Wesson 22A Sport. It's a gun that I picked up used, and let me just start out by saying that if you like action videos, people doing shooting, uh, comparing other guns, I, I don't have, as of current, another 22 with this gun. Uh, I don't own another 22. I don't have another one with. I'm not going to be doing any shooting, and I tend to get long-winded. So if uh, those aren't your, your type of videos, you just be forewarned. Um, here's a gun. Comes in the uh, regular Smith & Wesson blue box. And uh, there's that. There's a gun. Um, comes with two mags box spent casing, and uh, paperwork. I paid 200 bucks for it used, which uh, I've heard people getting them cheaper, probably. I'm um, sure that uh, get it less somewhere else, but I live in Minnesota, and that's just how we roll. So here's, let me get this case out of the way. The, it, uh, should be empty. It is. We'll check for that in a minute. This uh, extra mag is loaded with CCI uh, Stinger. And they, let me just put in a quick, you know, non-paid-for plug, free plug for them. Uh, this is damn near ne next to impossible to find. And it's uh, 1,640 feet per second, which is very fast for 22 ammo compared to just standard velocity or even the uh, like the mini mag which I think is like 1,235 feet per second. So uh, I have like, what do I have? I think I have 20 left and uh, just kind of saving these. You can shoot them without hearing protection, just like regular 22, but they do give uh, a better pop, absolutely, than the uh, regular 22s. So just put that in the case. We're going to sense its ammo and we're going to be Firing it, you know, dry firing it, and uh, just playing around with the gun. We're going to take the uh, ammo aspect of it and put that off to the side. So here's the uh, here's the pistol. This is I'm not sure if the the other if all 22A model pistols have an aluminum frame. This one has an aluminum frame. There are ones that are like all black. I'm not sure if those are steel, but uh, I believe the top part is steel. So the aluminum frame probably uh, has little to do with uh, weight reduction or anything like that. And as you'll be able to see in a, a couple minutes or a minute or very soon, hopefully, um, that it's it's a solid frame. It's This is a very weighty, uh, solid, heavy gun. And uh, I mean, it's comparable to other 22 pistols as far as weight, but if you're talking a Glock or something like that, that that's going to be lighter, probably much lighter, almost close to half, because uh, they're going for a different type, a different type of firearm. So, it is empty. Uh, the mag release is on the handle. Check the mag, and it is empty. We have nothing in there. So... Things I like, things I don't like. Um, I have ADHD, so I tend to go all all around. But uh, let's start with uh, the trigger. It has a crisp five pound trigger, which has a nice break. Um, we'll bring that forward, and uh, it has a stop, which is kind of weird. Um, usually, I have to pay more for that, you know, like match trigger. But uh, bring it back and. Has a very satisfying, um, very satisfying break. That's about five pounds. I haven't measured it. Uh, I'm sure other people have. I'm sure the data's out there. Um, but compared to like a Sig Mosquito, uh, which which I've shot, which is a cool little gun, but it has horrible trigger. It's like eight or nine pounds, and by the time it breaks, the the at least for me, the gun jerks a little bit. So any grouping I get 
left, right, center, whatever, is <laughs> completely faith-based. Uh, where this, not so much. I've got some pretty decent groupings. I've got about, I think, close to 700 rounds through it, which is a miracle these days with uh, 22 ammo being as hard to find as it is. I've been extremely fortunate. Uh, and then every time I shoot it, it's like, oh, this is so cheap. This is so fun. Ooh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do this again. So um, it uh, the trigger is a... Uh, it's a good trigger, but it's also kind of weird. It reminds me of like one of those futuristic laser, uh, you know, type of guns or whatever that when when you were a kid, um, that you would play with. That uh, they made like the four different noises. Then on the fifth pull, it would make all four noises combined, uh, or like a super soaker trigger. It's got a, a very weird C shape that like <laughs> cups my the the whole tip of my finger. It's it's kind of weird. But uh, it's, you know, and it's plastic. It uh, It's not metal. So, like, the Browning Buckmark has, like, a kind of like a gold-looking plated trigger that I believe is metal. And that's nicer. Um, I mean, it feels nicer. It's smooth. This has the, uh, like, the, what do they call it, a target trigger, technically, with those lines in it. Um, this piece, the... Uh, slide slide capture the slide release is very cheap it's very thin um it has lines i mean it looks cool it's you know it works but uh it's it's very thin and it's it's kind of weird but um then the safety too is it's all just kind of like thin you know probably cheap sheet metal that uh safety seems to work um and it's it's firm like you're not gonna Probably not going to knock it out of place um, unintentionally. Uh, this this does uh, for as cheap as it is and thin and all the bad things I could say about it. It does have a very satisfying slam forward uh, and lock up when you you know finally decide to do that. Uh, the sights are nice; they're fully adjustable, and uh, there's that screw and that screw. Um, they're all black, which I don't really like. I mean, I like the all black rear, but I really wish that, uh, like the Ruger, uh, it had a fiber optic pipe in the front or, uh, you wouldn't need a night sight, but you know, uh, tritium would be cool, I guess. Um, anything would be cool. Uh, a little tiny painted man on the front holding a flag would be, uh, anything would be better than just a, a flat black sight that, uh, blends right in to the flat black rear. So, uh, probably end up painting a white dot on there. Um, there is a rail with a number of, you know, cutouts for uh, red dot scope optic, well, whatever you want to put on there. I haven't put one on there, so I'm not sure if, you know, how much for looks this is, whether you can actually, I would imagine it wouldn't be a problem. I saw another video where a guy said that uh, you, you might have to like Dremel a channel in because uh, that these were like weird dimensions or something like that. I, I, I don't know. I've seen a couple other videos where people have had red dots on them. So uh, it shouldn't be that big a deal. Um, what else? What else do we have? Uh, the grip. I don't like the grip. I don't like the grip at all because it's kind of cheap. And within the uh, couple times I've had it out, these screws loosen up. Maybe because I'm kind of a girly man and I don't want to crank on them. Now they're nice and tight right now, but uh, they seem to loosen up. And this is like a hollow handle it has rubber right here and right here but it's cheap plastic uh it fills the hand um i have fairly large hands and you know it fills my whole hand but i i just i'm not i don't really like it i don't like the feel i don't it just feels weird to me um compared to any other gun um company called Alamont makes 
wood grips. They have one with kind of like a bulbous end, and I don't really like those. Uh, Smith & Wesson sells those uh, on their site. And that's like the only other grip through them that you can get aside from these. And then there's one that looks a little bit different. Uh, I think it has like a metal crest, but it's basically the same grip, and I, I just don't think I'd go that route. Um, company Alamont makes one that's not bulbous at the end, that it's it's kind of slim and contoured, but they're uh, walnut grips. And um, I think that would look a little weird with the black and the gray, and then, bam, wood. I mean, if I could get the, uh, what is it, um, kind of brown and gray swirl wood, uh, like the charcoal gray, that Smith & Wesson sells in the bulbous type grips. Uh, that that from Alamont that's slim, uh, I would do that, and I think that would look much better than regular walnut. But uh, from there, uh, let me say I owned a Ruger MK3 Hunter, which I ended up selling for my. Uh, I sold that plus cash to get my HK USP45, and I wish. To God. Now, I love the 45. I love HK. I wish to God I wouldn't have sold that gun because I got a fairly decent deal on that. Imagine that. I think I paid 400 bucks from a coworker for it used, and they go for, I want to say, they're like s close to 700 bucks brand new if you can find them, and I don't think it's a gun that they still make. Uh, they're about 550 used, and that's if you can find one. The, the Ruger MK3 Hunter as a 7-inch fluted barrel. It's all stainless steel. It's a pr pretty sweet-looking gun. Has, I want to say, Cocobolo wood grips. At least that's what uh, any place I've seen them, they list as Cocobolo. Uh, even though I thought Cocobolo looked a little different, uh, they look like rosewood, and I've seen them listed as rosewood. So I'm not sure what they come with, but uh, and this is... Talking about a gun that I'm not even reviewing, so let's not get too in depth with that. But that said, I'm my experience with this gun inevitably comes back to my experience with the Ruger, which was a phenomenal gun. However, with the Ruger, it was very easy to disassemble, and it took uh, a, a PhD to put it back together. There was like a nine or a ten step process with uh, tilting the gun back so a certain part of the sear would seat and then uh, forward, and then you have to pull the trigger and uh, all this uh, different stuff, which I've spoken to people and said, oh, <laughs> how do you like uh, you know putting that one together? And they're like, oh, it, it's fine. Well, yeah, it's fine if you've done it about 500 times. Maybe on the 501st time, it'll be like muscle memory to you. Um, I have a serious issue with it, where this gun is less aesthetically pleasing as the Ruger, all because of this trigger, which makes it very easy to disassemble. And for the most part, typically, uh, I've only had it apart like three times, but for the most part, my luck with uh, putting it back together has been substantially less complicated than uh than the Ruger. So that said, let's uh let's go ahead and try to take it apart and put it back together. Um lock the slide back, uh remove the magazine, and you push this trigger right there. And with any luck, uh the little plastic bushing that everyone complains about will not shoot across the room. So there's that, and we're just going to unhook that. That piece right there, a little thin metal piece. Let's see if we can get a focus on it. I'm kind of moving around too much. Anyway, uh, there's a part back here uh, where it hooks into. Uh, that just hooks in right there, and uh, then that slides forward. So there's that, and take that. Oh, 
there we go. So you have this piece, as you can see, it's all aluminum and it's very thick um, throughout. It's kind of light, but it's it's very thick. Um, so there's that. And then this, this is, this is heavier than shit. I'm <laughs> not gonna lie. I mean, look, it's solid. It's very solid. Uh, one thing I don't like is this appeared at one point, probably when it was brand new, to be black coated um, instead of polished. And it's not exactly smooth. Or at least right now it's not smooth. And uh, I don't think in any course of this gun's life it was ever smooth. Uh, like my USP feed ramp, like my XDM feed ramp, like the Ruger stainless feed ramp. I, it just, it's coated with this black stuff and it's a little bit worn away. I cleaned it. Uh, I did clean this, but it looks, it's kind of trashed. It's kind of a cheap finish. I don't know how many rounds the guy shot before me, but uh, that said, there's, uh, there's the top part. And uh, let's, oh, we have to talk about this. A lot of, this rubs a lot of people the wrong way, uh, myself included, because the better you can make a gun, the fewer pieces, uh, if any, that you need to routinely replace. I mean, a barrel after tens of thousands of rounds, um, other parts, but uh, nowadays you shouldn't have to replace parts that wear out uh, routinely on a gun. I mean, it, it's just uh, for most people that aren't, you know, shooting competition or whatever for recreation, they will go their whole lives with a well-made gun without replacing anything. And it'll work just the same uh, the day they get rid of it, the day they die, the day they give it away, the day they pass it on, as the day they bought it with a well-made gun. Um, this is, like we said, a sub- $300 price range, brand new, uh, in most cases. So it, uh, I, I don't know if other guns in that price range have any issues like this, but, uh, th this little piece flies across the room periodically. If you're not careful with, uh, taking this part, putting it back together, uh, mostly taking it apart, uh, bye-bye. I mean, it, uh, can and will shoot across the room. This is a brand new piece. It comes with uh, the the one that I got came with too. I don't know if the guy or girl that had it before me replaced the piece, uh, and it probably didn't need to be replaced. But I just thought, hey, why the hell not? You know, start fresh. So just replace that. And uh, there is a part right there, a little indent that that sits in, right there. Um, so you just put that over the top. And in there, and then there's, uh, it's kind of sloped downward at the bottom of this little plastic piece, so it slides in there um, when you put it back together. So, like that. That's no good. All right, you got to kind of hold that and feed it in like that. See how we got that in there? Okay. So far, so good. Despite being thorough, like I said, this is a hell of a lot easier than a Ruger. Let's bring this back to lock that into place. Okay. And we'll take the top of it. Everything looks good. That little hook in the back of it right there. Lock that in. And if all goes well, pull that trigger. That goes in there. And bring that back a little bit. Barrel toward the frame. We're locked in good. So that is... Uh, that's the extent of the difficulty of putting it together, which 
like I said, compared to other guns, one gun in particular, is so much easier. And then uh, one thing, you will not get it to fire without the magazine in it. Throw that in there, and you have a crisp five-pound pull. So there's that. I want to, um, because I miss my Ruger, but uh, its uh, value is definitely not lost on me, that uh, I want the 7-inch model. Now, you can get a 7-inch barrel for about 150 bucks, or I could just sell this and buy a 7-inch model, but my girlfriend bought this for me, and I'm sure that would, uh, in some way give her a little bit of butt hurt if I sold the gun to buy a different or better gun. So let's just modify the hell out of it to make me happy. Um, get a seven inch barrel, 150 bucks, the wood grip, uh, which is in my opinion, probably better than this. I've never seen it, but Hey, I will bet money that it, it would feel better. Uh, about 200 bucks. So I got this, uh, I said that I bought it. Uh, I didn't buy it. She bought it. It was a uh, birthday gift, and I'm very grateful. Uh, she gave me the receipt in case I wanted to return it. But uh, no, she paid 200 bucks. So 200 plus another a little over 200 is four, which is uh, much less than the 550 that I would have to spend to get another MK3 Hunter if I could find one, or a heavy barrel government model. Uh, Ruger, I think it's MK2. Those are like 675 bucks. They're uh, made to be as heavy as uh, 1911 45 to uh, train with. And I think they still have the weird grip angle, which I don't really get. But uh, it's it's an old gun. They've been out of. Uh, they haven't made them for quite some time. But uh, regardless, if I get the grips that I want, the barrel that I want, uh, it will be as heavy, if not heavier than a Ruger, which is nice. I've heard people complain about how heavy this gun is. Okay, you're buying a target pistol, theoretically. You're buying something to shoot beer cans with, to shoot uh, paper with, to shoot squirrels with. Okay, and to get good groupings, it, let's say that you buy a really expensive match-grade gun, usually they're pretty heavy, especially on the front. So as you're firing, the nose isn't jumping as much. You're not getting as much muzzle flip, and you're able to go from target to target to target to target. I have no problem with the weight. I actually like the weight. If it was heavier, I'd be happier. Um, that said, uh, I welcome the 7-inch barrel and the extra probably 2 or 3 ounces that it brings. This is probably close. 36, 38 ounces. I've heard the seven inch barrel, uh, model is about 42 ounces. So, um, that's a pretty heavy gun. It's heavier than my XDM. It's heavier than my 45. It's heavier than, uh, you know, a lot of other handguns out there. <laughs> Most other, uh, purpose built handguns. So I like the weight. Um, and I like the value for, I don't think that this is going to be any less accurate than the Ruger. Some people can argue about that, but hey, why argue about how accurate 122 is versus another when you're not in, you know, competition? I mean, maybe if you're in competition with someone else, but as far as general purposes for the gun, um, it is uh, a fairly nice gun for a used gun. If you're looking at a $200 price point, if you're looking at buying something brand new for 300 bucks, you definitely have options. Uh, Browning Buckmark, a Ruger uh, 2245, which I don't really like because that has kind of the same plasticky fat uh, grip and it's got a shorter barrel and it's light and it's, which some people like the light. I don't like light. I, I want that heavy front nose to keep from a uh, muzzle flip. Um, as far as aesthetics, uh, as far as build quality, like I said, you have options. The Beretta, 
um, other stuff, but I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy with it the way it is. I will be way happier with it uh, the way I want it to be. And I think if you buy it to teach uh, a child, or a, you know, teenager, uh, wife, a girlfriend, yourself, uh, recreational shooting, I think you'll be very happy as well. So thank you for watching my video. And uh, if you like the video, like the video. If you like my channel, subscribe, check out my other videos. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.